Happy Friday. So today we're going to talk about aluminum and copper separation. So a lot of times we get the question of like, why, is, why are you able to separate those? Well, they're different densities, but we're not always able to separate them. And here's why. So what ends up happening on an air table or a water table? In this case here, we'll talk about uh, air tables. You have a, and this is just a crude drawing, crude box, but basically you have an opening in the top. Your, ma your material comes in through the top you have a deck that goes through through the air table. Um, I exaggerated that a little bit. So your heavies come out the front, your lights come out the back, and there's normally an air box that sits below this and it pressurizes it and you have airflow coming up through the air table. So this whole thing vibrates and it's basically a shaking conveyor. So this, uh, uh, they call it a fluidized bed. Um, and it's the same principle with water. The water tables, these shake. And what ends up happening is all your little particles, when they hit the, the, the deck, they, they want to bounce upwards because this thing is shaking in upwards motion. So this wants to climb up. So when you drop uh, copper in plastic, the plastic's really light. And what ends up happening is this concentration of copper builds up. And because the air is blowing up from below, the plastic is not allowed to touch the deck. The plastic just floats above. So... The same thing happens with aluminum. So when we're chopping aluminum and copper together, in, in many cases, the, probably the most common one where you would have those uh, together are in aluminum copper radiators. And we just installed a machine in Canada recently, so we'll have some footage of that soon um, that's gonna be available. But this here, the aluminum and the copper come in through the top and your copper climbs up and your aluminum, if it weren't for the copper, would also want to climb up, right? Uh, because it does have some density. Luckily, the copper flakes are, are a little bit bigger and the air surface on that flake acts like a foil. So now this copper, no pun intended, foil uh, falls in and the air is blowing up through it. And now this flake of, of copper or a uh, flake of aluminum wants to go back. Um, now, if you were to turn the air down and if you were to not have any copper, that aluminum would climb up. Now here's where it gets tricky. If you have die cast, zinc, uh, or even a piece of aluminum that's in a nugget form, that there, uh, the air doesn't go around it the same, the same way. It doesn't go, uh, it doesn't hold it up. The air goes around it, and then that piece of aluminum can sink and it can climb up. So what we typically do in aluminum copper radiators uh, is on a larger plant, we will have multiple stages of separation. So we'll have screeners and such uh, to try to get everything in the same size. But copper and aluminum goes in, the copper being heavier hits the deck and sinks to the bottom of the deck. Because the deck is moving, you end up getting the copper hopping. And the aluminum, because it is lighter than the copper and because there's more surface, the air blowing up through it will cause that little flake to float and go out the back into your aluminum pile. Now, what we like to do a lot of times is in our first stage of separation, we'll set this thing up to get really clean aluminum in the back and we'll, we'll make the front side a little more forgiving. So you're gonna get some aluminum in the front and the aluminum that you will get in the front is going to be those aluminum nuggets that are very, very uh, tight that are folded over and, and, or they're folded over into copper and there's some copper in there. So you will get a mixture that is okay, but not, not awesome. And then from there, you can take that material and granulate it again, and there it liberates everything. And once you put it back on the air table, at that point, you're talking about 90 plus percent copper versus aluminum. So now the air table deck is, is taken over by way more copper than aluminum. And that's another thing. When you're separating materials, if you have a 50-50, your air table is gonna be about 50-50. If you have a higher concentrated material, your copper is gonna go back further on your air table. So when you are running this rerun through, and if you were to run it through a granulator, another granulator, and go back on the air table, you will get a high concentration of copper, and then that little leftover aluminum is just gonna hang out in the back here, and then eventually tumble off. So in large systems, we will do this all integrated. We're not gonna do reruns. This just goes into another granulator and into another air table. But in smaller setups where 
uh, space and money is concerned and there's you know not as much startup capital to, to do the project, then they'll just store this and then they will keep this copper and put it back through the system later. Another thing that I've seen is some people try to, if they have a, a buyer that doesn't care that the aluminum isn't 100% clean, they will focus their efforts more on trying to separate the copper. The, however, most people don't do that, and the reason for it is that it's almost a four to one. So you'll get, you'll get four boxes for each one box of copper. So which would you rather run again? I would way rather run one box of copper over than have to run four boxes of aluminum over. So that's why our method of trying to get the aluminum as clean as possible is why we go this method. So that's how you separate aluminum from copper. Um, one of the methods we use uh, and we like using is we'll put a screener before this and we drop out all the dust, the copper dust, the aluminum dust, and the, the garbage that's stuck inside and the garbage being the lint that's stuck inside the, the radiators, um, you know, the road debris, or, or oftentimes uh, if it's a radiator that, uh, or, or a, a coil that comes from an AC unit, um, they can have a lot of lint from the dryer vent that's nearby. So those, those get impacted with that. What that does is these coils have a little bit of oil in them. And when those get granulated or chopped or, or however you're breaking them apart, they will, that oil wants to go somewhere. So if you have something in there to absorb, uh, like that lint, that oil will get absorbed by that and those little particles will actually fall through the screener. So you end up with less oil on your deck. Oil on your deck is not a good thing because eventually your whole screen surface here will get clogged with oil and uh, then little dust will get clogged, it will get stick, sticks to the oil and then you have to clean up this whole deck. We have other videos that show you how to clean a deck uh, and we'll put a link to that in the description below, but that's how we do that. Any questions, put in the comments, like, comment, subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next one. Happy Friday.